I'm Glenn McGordy. I am the wine grower and the plant science advisor from Mendocino County uh, with the University of California Cooperative Extension. I'm here today to talk with you about vineyard irrigation with a limited supply of water. I want to begin my talk to acknowledging that a lot of the information I'm using has come from Australia where my fellow scientists and colleagues have worked under severe drought conditions and such as in the years 2006 and 2007 where almost 80% uh, of the flow of their principal irrigation system, the Murray-Darling River, was not available. And they learned a lot about how to keep grapevines alive and, and how to uh, grow fruit under such dire conditions. The first step I would recommend as you plan your year is confirm your irrigation water amount and availability. Knowing things like the pond levels, uh, the water levels in your well, and whether or not you're gonna be able to access uh, water from surface sources is really critical as you go forward planning your irrigation strategy for the year. Next step is to be sure your irrigation system is working properly. Do all the usual things. Check your filters to be sure that they're clean. Check emitter output to be sure that your irrigation system is in good condition. Flush the ends of the lines. Absolutely fix leaks. Leaks can cost you a lot of water and in a year like this where water is so precious, we want to be sure it ends up in your crop. Check the pressure of your system to be sure that you're delivering water at adequate pressures. And if you need help, UC Cooperative Extension and the Natural Resource Conservation Service uh, will often assist you in the field to figure out if your system is working well. If you have limited water, plan on having a smaller crop. Prune to fewer buds during the dormant season, drop fruit if necessary, and develop a smaller canopy. It takes water to ripen fruit, so less fruit, less water is kind of how it works. So next thing is plan to manage your water for the growth stage that you're at. In some parts of California, we've had really good rainfall uh, in the months of February and March. But this is just sort of general guidelines about how much water your plants are going to be using. So we can see from bud break to flowering, about 9% of the water for the year is used at that time. If there hasn't been rain in your region, you want to do light to moderate uh, irrigation. About 6% of your water should be used at flowering to fruit set. It's a very critical time. If you don't water, if the plant is dry at this time, you will not get any fruit. So be sure that there's moisture available for the plants. Next is fruit set to verasion. We'd use about 35% of the total water for the year at this time. Hold back. We don't want a big canopy and practice regulated deficit irrigation. Finally, verasion to harvest, you're going to want to irrigate to keep the leaves on the vine and ripen the fruit. And if you have any water left over, it's very nice to irrigate if you can. It sometimes isn't possible, but uh, we find that it's useful for uh, next season uh, to have some carbohydrate reserves built up. Pre-bud irrigation is something that people ask about, but the Australian research suggests that it's very difficult to compensate for an entire wetted root zone with drip irrigation. So if you're in an area that's very, very dry, their advice is to sort of hold on to your water until we get a little bit closer to bud break. Vines are much more uh, tolerant of reduced irrigation than many thought possible for one season, but when we have two seasons in a row, that's when things really become problematic. Pruning is something that we want to think about. If you are, it's early in the season, you can prune to a normal bud number and see what happens with the rain. And uh, if, on the other hand, it's looking dry, you can reduce buds by limiting a percentage of spurs to one bud if you're spur pruning. Uh, another strategy is to prune long and then adjust at bud break. You can also wait till after frost and remove shoots during suckering passes. But in general, if we don't have very much water, you want to reduce the size of the canopy. At bud break, make sure that you have enough water to wet at least two feet of soil in, uh, to be sure that you have adequate water to elongate the canopy. Uh, in, in the north coast, we've had at least six inches of rain, so we probably have adequate moisture down to three feet. However, I would suggest that you verify that either with instrumentation or a soil auger or your shovel or something. Now this, we'll talk a little bit about bud break to flowering and fruit set again. 
Our irrigation strategy is to practice regulated deficit irrigation so as not to promote a large canopy, which means basically we hold back water until we see that the vine growth has uh, slowed down. If it's warm and dry, irrigate before bloom. Again, dryness at bloom will almost certainly result in a poor crop. Check your soil moisture before you irrigate to be sure that you need to irrigate. Try to manage your water so that you have enough uh, to keep leaves on the plant all the way until harvest because if you lose leaves, it's going to really seriously impact the quality of your fruit. Canopy management. Do not promote a large canopy with water and fertilizer early in the season if you have limited water as this is going to make the vines use more water. We'd like to see your shoots about three and a half feet long with about eight leaves. And avoid sunburn on the fruit by uh, lightly re uh, leaf removing uh, in the fruit zone. Don't overdo the leaf removal because it's likely to be warm and dry and uh, we're likely to get significant sunburn if you overdo leaf pulling. Thin shoots early. So again, on each spur, we'd like to see two shoots. Uh, normally, this would be okay to have three shoots on a spur if we're producing white fruit like uh, for higher cropping levels. But in a year like this one, let's go down to two shoots and do that early so that we uh, cap, uh, are not wasting water on unnecessary growth. Our fruit set to veraison is when we're going to practice regulated deficit irrigation. Limit water to control fruit size and advance maturity and color. So the Australians like to use soil moisture measurements like seed probes or water marks, or which are water sensors in the soil. And they also use visual vine conditions. Here in California, we can use pressure bombs and uh, pyrometers, which are ways of looking at the actual moisture status of the plant to help us decide when to start to irrigate. This is just an example of uh, a gypsum block watermark and the kind of charts that they produce. So uh, when they get high, they turn on the water and then it goes down again. This is measuring in kilopascals. And, uh, you know, again, irrigation for them, they're trying to put it precisely in about probably uh, the surface down to about 24 inches. They often irrigate at night to try to prevent uh, any evaporation that they can so that all the water is used. This is not an expensive system and it's fairly effective. This is just some uh, suggested soil water tensions that they use and the only take home message I have for you here is that you can see that uh, when we're using regulated deficit irrigation there's quite a difference between the, uh, the moisture uh, kilopascals uh, in, in the soil, so uh, 40 to 100 in sandy soils, 50 to 200 in loam soils, and in clay soils, 60 to 400. So if we're irrigating for full evapotranspiration, we'd be turning the water on at these uh, particular kilopascal levels, but under regulated deficit irrigation, we're really making the plants slow down, uh, which slows down shoot growth and also fruit development, so we end up with smaller fruit with more intensive flavor. Crop load is very important. The more fruit that you put on the vine, the more water you will need. And if you don't have enough water to do your entire ranch, consider not irrigating your low value blocks if you don't have to. And if you have no water, you can consider removing all the fruit by machine or urea sprays. That's what was done in Australia during their very se severe years. So they found their, their blocks recovered best from dry conditions during the next season when fruit has been completely removed. Vineyard floor management is also important. Mowers spray out cover crops early to reduce competition for moisture between the vines and the cover crop. The Australians claim that the residual of dried out cover crop is cooler in the vineyard and compared to disc soil, uh, they would rather just mow. You must remember though, they have less humidity than us and sometimes higher uh, uh, air temperatures in some of the places where they're working. They've used 12 ounces per acre of glyphosate early to take out small weeds, which is, of course, registered and recommended here in California as well. This is kind of what a vineyard would look like uh, under those sorts of conditions. Mowed very, very short, but you still have the residual vegetation there. And of course, this is protecting the soil, helping to keep a little bit of the reflected heat down into the vines and possibly saving water. Under the vine, weed control is critical, whether you're doing it with tillage or whether you're doing it with herbicides. This is very, very important that you do it early so that there's no competition between weeds and the vines. Most of the 
Uh, Vine's root system is right underneath it, so we want to be sure there's no competition from any uh, annual or perennial vegetation in that area. If you leaf pull, light touch. Really important not to overdo it because frequently in dry years we get uh, what I call heat storms where temperatures go up high and we can see shriveling. Make sure you know what your winemaker wants. So the uh, grapes on the right are Sauvignon Blanc that are being grown for a kind of a more tropical, higher alcohol sort of wine, whereas the ones on the left are more of New Zealand style where they're very grassy and vegetative in taste. So uh, adjust the canopy to make sure that the winemaker is happy with the end product. This is just kind of a look at a, a vineyard that is well suited for a drought year. Uh, it's actually a Pinot Noir vineyard in Anderson Valley in Mendocino County. And you can see the canopy is not very high in the lower right hand corner uh, picture. We can see we've got shoots about three and a half feet long. We've mowed the vineyard floor. There's no weeds underneath and the crop loads are light. There is a little leaf pulling, but not really excessive. It's just on the morning side of the vines. Uh, Veration to harvest is really the critical time. We really want to stretch your water as best you can to keep the leaves on the vines. That's really critical to keep the leaves on the vines because they have to be making sugar to finish the crop and also prevent the fruit from shriveling. Soil moisture monitoring is really helpful to schedule irrigations at this stage. And probably short intervals are going to be best for you. Make sure that you're hitting the root zones and not leaching water through the root zone. So we usually find that uh, applying water six to 10 hours, depending on soil texture, is really the right amount. And we may do that once or twice a week, depending on the weather. Uh, it depends so much on your climate, you really have to work a little bit with uh, your local cooperative extension office to find out what evapotranspiration rates are, because of course they vary greatly around the state where we grow grapes. Harvest considerations include working closely with the winemaker to check fruit chemistry. Drier conditions no doubt affect ripening, usually accelerating it, and we can see pH and titratable acidity uh, change very rapidly in very short periods of time. The fruit might actually ripen at lower sugars that uh, you should taste, check seed maturity and fruit chemistry with the winemaker to be sure that they know what's going on. We can find that sugar uh, levels and can go up very quickly and acidity can go down very quickly. So it's really important to be checking often with the winemaker as you get close to harvest. If, if unfortunately you run out of water, you're gonna ripen by dehydration. So you're gonna end up with low pH, high titratable acidity and a high percentage bricks of sugar. And this is gonna make it much more challenging in the winery and probably not as good quality as if you can keep the leaves on and arrive at ripening by normal conditions. Okay, if you're lucky enough to have a little bit of water left over, it's not a bad idea uh, to irrigate if you expect cold temperatures, you know, temperatures below 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you're less likely to receive winter in injury assuming vines are hardened off after harvest. So this has been our experience is that when we have dry years uh, and the vines are dry and cold temperatures, we often get bud injury. It's always really a hard call to make. If you have limited water left and the weather is dry, should you do it or should you uh, uh, plan on holding on to a little water just in case it doesn't rain very much the next season? And uh, none of us have a crystal ball. It's not a bad idea to see what the long-term forecasts are, but uh, that's always a difficult decision that you have to make. Just some final thoughts about our situation with weather. Uh, learning from the Australians, they've accepted climate change and they feel that we've moved into a drier uh, weather uh, regime. They irrigate less than we do. They always have and always will, quite simply because they don't have the water. They also don't use rootstocks in many places. They're on their, their own rooted vines, uh, which tend to be fairly drought tolerant. And where they do use rootstocks, they've eliminated most with Vitus riparia parentage, such as 101.14, SO4, and 5C. They prefer higher vigor rootstocks, such as Ramsey, 101.1103, Paulson, 110R, and 140RU. Well, I've uh, tried to give you some ideas about how to use your water during this dry year and about all I can tell you is good luck for the 2014 vintage. And uh, if you need further assistance, you can contact me or your local viticulture farm advisor. Thank you.